हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम पूजा कुमारी फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जोलॉजी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली टुडे वी विल टॉक अबाउट सॉदर्न ब्लॉट हाइब्रिडाइजेशन विच इज अ मेथड ऑफ जीन आइडेंटिफिकेशन सो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट इट्स कंटेंट एंड वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी एंड नो अबाउट इट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फ्रॉम दिस टॉपिक यू विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट वॉट इज ब्लॉटिंग लाइक सर्दर्न ब्लॉटिंग नॉर्दर्न ब्लॉटिंग वेस्टर्न ब्लॉटिंग वॉट आर मेथड्स ऑफ और फिक्स हाउ टू फिक्स द और ट्रांसफर द न्यूक्लिक एसिड्स ऑन टू द मेम्ब्रेन हाउ प्रोब्स कैन बी डिजाइंड एंड लेबल्ड हाउ लेबलिंग ऑफ डी एन ए प्रोब कैन बी डन हाउ प्रिपरेशन ऑफ डी एन ए सैम्पल्स फॉर सर्दर्न हाइब्रिडाइजेशन कैन बी डन एंड अदर डी एन ए ब्लॉटिंग टेक्निक्स डी एन ए हाइब्रिडाइजेशन एट्सेट्रा सो आफ्टर स्टडिंग दिस मॉड्यूल you shall be able to learn and understand the basic protocol steps followed for southern hybridization the various probes utilized and the labeling techniques in addition the diverse set of application will be discussed in brief so let's talk about how to blot or what is blotting blotting is a standard laboratory technique in which biological samples in a gel medium are transferred onto a solid support like nitrocellulose or nylon membrane for further studies when the biological sample is dna the technique is called southern blot named after the discoverer edward southern in 1975 the blotting technique is named differently depending on the variety of the samples used for blotting the northern blotting technique which transferred rna samples was developed shortly thereafter the name northern blotting similarly the transfer of proteins was named as western blotting in southern blotting the genomic dna is digested with the restriction endonucleases and the fragments produced are then separated by gel electrophoresis on the basis of fragment length after staining the gel the separated bands are visualized thereafter the denatured dna fragments are blotted onto a nylon membrane using a capillary action or electrophoresis further during hybridization a probe that is a fragment of nucleic acid carrying specific sequence of genes of interest then binds to the blotted dna fragments carrying identical sequences this hybridization between the dna and the sample that is between the dna sample and the probe can be further visualized by means of the labeled probe which comes after that so now let's talk about uh, blotting that is how we can do it and what is the protocol or etc the technique in which dna rna or proteins are immobilized on the solid support like nylon or nitrocellulose membrane is known as blotting depending on the type of samples which could be dna rna or proteins different blotting methods are available for different things blotting technique is known as southern blot when the dna fragments are transferred and likewise for rna it is known as northern blotting and when proteins are immobilized it is known as western blotting what is southern blotting the presence or absence of particular nucleotide sequence in different dna samples is verified using the technique of southern blotting now the question is how to perform southern blotting so to do that firstly dna is isolated and digested using a restriction enzyme and a nucleus these digested dna fragments are separated on the basis of size by gel electrophoresis which is agarose gel electrophoresis the separated fragments are then visualized on uv illuminator after staining the agarose gel with etbr that is ethidium bromide why ethidium bromide because it gets intercalated into the major group of dna or rna and fluoresces under the uv light the separated dna fragments are then transferred from agarose gel and are immobilized on nylon or nitrocellulose membrane the fragments are then denatured to produce single strands by providing chemical treatments the radio labeled or chemically labeled single stranded probe 
is then added which binds to the complementary DNA. A radioactive labeled, a radio labeled or chemically labeled single stranded DNA probe is then added which binds to the complementary DNA sequences immobilized on the membrane. To detect the exact location of the labeled probe, the membrane is covered with an X-ray film and subsequent to the development, location of the probe becomes visible. So now let us talk about what is other uh, blotting technique that is northern blotting. The gene expression studies are carried out by analysis of the RNA for studies RNA is extracted from the samples and is finally immobilized on the membrane after separation by gel electrophoresis. The detection is achieved using a labeled probe either a DNA or RNA. What is western blotting? Protein of interest are detected by western blotting techniques. Proteins are purified and separated by electrophoresis and immobilized onto a membrane. The probes used in western blotting are labeled proteins, antibodies and hence is also known as a protein immunoblot. Let us talk about fixation of transferred nucleic acid onto the membrane. Array of membranes are currently available for hybridization techniques. Initially, let us talk about fixation of transferred nucleic acid onto the membrane that is a method. Array of membranes are currently available for hybridization techniques. Initially, nitrocellulose was the most widely used membrane due to the high sensitivity and low background signals. Nevertheless, a variety of new nylon membranes which are physically much robust and tough are now available. For the purpose of immobilizing single stranded DNA on membranes, high salt con conditions like which is more than 1 molar NaCl are required. Finally, the membrane is heated at 80 degree centigrade in a vacuum to permanently attach the single stranded DNA. Under varying salt con concentrations, all the nylon membranes are able to bind nucleic acids and an irreversible attachment can be accomplished by UV irradiation for 3 to 5 minutes. Likewise, in the case of gene library, the DNA from bacterial colonies or bacteriophage plants can be transferred and immobilized by growing them on solid medium plates and thus enabling the identification of a single colony or plaque of interest among huge number of colonies. After hybridization between the DNA and the probe, the colonies carrying the gene of interest can then be signaled out from the original master plate for further analysis. Let us talk about methods of probe labeling. Then that is how we can uh, label the probe. First is radioactive detection. For years, the probes used in blotting techniques were radioactively labeled with P32 due to its high energy and efficient integration into the phosphate groups of different deoxynucleotides. The detection of these radioactively labeled probes is done using X-ray film. The short half-life, 2 weeks of P32, contamination, hazards and the expenditure involved in the disposing of this radioactive waste are the main drawbacks of this labeling method. Currently, there are various different non-radioactive detection methods like colorimetric, fluorescent and chemiluminescence are available. First of all, we will discuss about the colorimetric detection. In this labeling method, a visible colored precipitate product is produced. Example, initially a digoxygenin labeled probe is used which after hybridization with the target is exposed to anti-digoxygenin antibody fastened to an enzyme involved in the catalyzing colorimetric reaction. Second is fluorescent detection. In this labeling method, the probes are coupled with fluorescent molecules. Example, a biotin labeled probe when exposed to evidin specifically binds to biotin with a high affinity conjugated to a fluorescent tag. Once excited, this fluorophore tag emits light 
that can be detected via instruments. Chemiluminescence detection includes, it is basically based on the outcome of an enzymatic reaction that leads to the discharge of visible light that can be detected. The example for this includes the light is emitted during luciferase catalysis reaction. Let us talk about labeling of DNA probes that is how DNA probes can be prepared. For labeling of the probe, one of the four nucleotide is first labeled either radioactively or non-radioactively and then is incorporated onto the probe using any of the following approach like PCR labeling. This is one of the simplest and most common approach of incorporating nucleotides which are labeled into the probes. To begin with, the, to begin with, the designed primers are used to amplify the probe. The sequence of the gene of interest and during amplification, one of the labeled DNTP is easily incorporated into the probe. Next is NIC translation. In this process, DNA is 1 and DNA polymerase in the presence of labeled nucleotide acts on a double stranded DNA sequence of the probe. First DNA is 1. First of all, DNA is 1 will produce a few NICs in the double stranded DNA sequences of the probe. Later, the second enzyme, DNA polymerase, fills and fixes these NICs by synthesizing the DNA in 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Together, the exonuclease and the polymerase activity of DNA polymerase assist in the incorporation of labeled DNTP in probe sequences. Next is random oligoprime synthesis. In this method, double stranded DNA sequence of the probe to be labeled are first denatured and then annealed to a random hexamer oligonucleotide. That is, clunopolymerase is then employed to incorporate the labeled DNTP by extending these random primers. Next processor is end labeling. In this method, the ends of the DNA or RNA in particular are labeled. 5 prime end is labeled using polynucleotide kinase enzyme that provides the terminal P32 labeled phosphate group from the DNTP to the OH group of the probe. Now let us talk about preparation of DNA samples for southern hybridization. The DNA preparation methods depends on the type of DNA samples required for southern blotting. In this case of high molecular weight genomic DNA preparation where the random sharing of the DNA has to be prevented, the cell membranes are disrupted using detergents like SDS that is sodium dodecyl sulfate. Bacterial cell wall lysis is carried out using the combined treatment of lysozyme and EDTA. EDTA that is ethylene diamine tetraacetate. Lysozyme helps in the degradation of polymorphic compounds present in the cell wall and EDTA which is a chelating agent chelates the magnesium ion that are involved in the integrity of polymorphic structure of the cell wall. Once the cells are lysed, various molecules that is biomolecules present inside the cell other than the DNA are aimed to be removed using different treatments like proteinase K or removing proteins, RNAs for RNA and so on. Lastly, the final wash is given with ethanol to precipitate the residual biomolecules and others left out contaminants. But during the plasmid DNA preparation, which are small supercoiled molecules unlike the long linear genomic DNA, the cell extract is treated with alkali which leads to the precipitation of linear genomic DNA and the plasmid DNA left in the supernatant itself. What is DNA blotting technique? After DNA purification, restriction endonucleases, the treatment is carried out. The DNA fragments produced after digestion and are then separated on the basis of size by gel electrophoresis. So, prior to southern blot, this gel is given a pre-treatment with 0.25 molar HCl for 30 minutes and then with the alkaline solution which might be 0.5 molar NaOH. HCl treatment causes depuration by cleaving the glycosidic bond between the purines and deoxyribose sugars. 
alkali treatment leads to the denaturation of the double stranded dna to single stranded dna by breaking the hydrogen bonds present in between this single stranded dna form facilitates the transfer of dna binding or to the membrane that is nylon membrane and ultimately is required for hybridization process with the probe finally the gel is neutralized by soaking in tris salt buffer since dna transfer and immobilization occurs on membrane at neutral ph so the southern blot assembly is then set up by cutting in two pieces of wattman 3 mm paper and one piece of nylon membrane about 1 mm larger than the gel in both dimensions also the stack of blotting sheet approximately 8 cm is high in height is cut same as the size of the gel one piece of wattman that is 3 mm paper is soaked in 20x ssc and is laid in the plastic tray the gel is inverted and placed well side facing downwards on the top of the soaked wattman paper that is 3 mm paper and kept on the tray the piece of nylon membrane is soaked in 20x ssc and positioned over the gel avoiding any air bubble to trap in between the gel and the membrane pieces of wattman 3 mm paper are placed on well uh, wet uh, nylon membrane ever wet a stack of cut blotting sheet is placed any horizontal smooth surface rectangular about weight that is around 500 g is then placed over the stack of blotting sheets this assembly is left undisturbed overnight to allow the transfer of dna from the gel to the membrane next day the blotting sheets and the wattman paper are removed from the evolved gel the position of the gel slots on the membrane is marked the membrane is then washed with 6x ssc that is sodium chloride sodium citrate and placed over a clean blotting sheet and dried at room temperature to fix the dna on the membrane the sides of the membrane carrying dna is exposed to uv radiation and then baked at 80 degree centigrade in an oven for some time after sudden blotting the membrane is stored in the folds of blotting sheets for subsequent hybridization experiment so from dna hybridization during southern blotting the single stranded dna fragment immobilized on the membrane containing the gene of interest is detected using the probe for the desired gene sequence so hybridization of probe to dna immobilized on the nylon membrane for the purpose of hybridization analysis southern blot is soaked in a buffer containing the hybridization probe customarily in a hybridization bottles that are under constant rotation for uniform exposure of all areas of membrane to the probes firstly to do this firstly the membrane is soaked in pre hybridization solution for 2 to 3 hours in a hybridization oven set at a 65 degree centigrade mixture of ssc sds den hard reagent and denatured salmon sperm dna to block the spurious dna binding sites on the membrane and hence ultimately decreasing the chances of non specific signals the second step is hybridization the probe is denatured by incubating for few minutes at 100 degree centigrade in a water bath the denatured probe is then added into the bottle containing the membrane which is submerged in pre hybridization solution this pre hybridization solution now containing the probe is called as hybridization solution the bottles containing the membrane submerged in hybridization solution are again continually rotated for 12 to 16 hours at 65 degree centigrade during hybridization process stringent conditions are kept to facilitate specific probe target association this stringent stringency is established first by the salt composition of the hybridization solution since the probe target hybrid depends on the ionic strength of the buffer used and the high temperature at which the hybridization is carried out for the reason that the melting temperature which is tm the highest temperature at which 
the probe target hybrid is stable of a complex complete base paired complementary sequence of the probe target hybrid is high as compared to non specific hybrids therefore the correct combination of salt composition of the buffers used and temperature plays a crucial role in desired probe target hybrids in the end the membrane is washed in post hybridization solution and then finally the membrane undergoes the detection process suitable for the label coupled to the probe for example auto radiography in the case of radioactively labeled probes let's talk about application of southern blotting hybridization first could be genetic detection and diagnosis of diseases by means of southern blot hybridization using gene probes single gene disorders example alpha and beta thalassemia sickle cell anemia can be detected for prenatal diagnosis however currently pcr and real time pcr techniques are preferred choices as they are fast and less laborious methods in situ hybridization ish is based on the complementary base pairing of labeled cdna RNA probe to normal or abnormal nucleic acid sequences in a chromosome cells or tissues mostly to detect and localize specific mRNA sequences within the preserved tissues and the cells can be identified morphologically in a heterogeneous cell populations from such a heterogeneous population actual affected cell can be identified next is gene identification genomic libraries are constructed by using digestion of genomic dna and then cloning the fragments of different sizes in cloning vectors these libraries are then screened using nucleic acid hybridization which involves the use of specific gene probes to select the desired clone what is microarray in case of microarray also there are minute arrays of gene fx to the glass slides small amounts of dna are blotted onto the slides and then hybridized with a specific probes a microarray allows quick study of many genes to understand the gene discovery sequencing and expression studies in case of fingerprinting dna fingerprinting is based on the detection of distinct dna sequences in human tissue like hair skin blood semen etc the main application of dna fingerprinting is in the paternity and maternity testing forensics and so on in this technique variable number tandem repeats that is vntr and short tandem repeats that is str gene markers are used this dna the dna sample is digested and separated using gel electrophoresis in order to generate a base distinct band pattern labeled short nucleotide vntr and str sequence probes are used in case of rf lp analysis that is restriction fragment length polymorphism which detects the occurrence of fragments of different lengths after the dna sample is digested using specific restriction enzymes rf lp acts as a probe and consists of a labeled dna sequence that binds with one or more fragments created by digestion of dna samples and separated by gel electrophoresis which is agarose gel electrophoresis basically therefore revealing a distinctive blotting arrangement distributed or attributed to a specific genotype at a specific locus the rl flp probes are often utilized in genome mapping and in various investigations like diagnostics forensics and paternity issues to summarize this particular technique we will just say in few words that is southern blotting is one of the significant techniques in the molecular biology it was first developed by em southern in 1975 in this technique the gene genomic dna is digested with the restriction endonucleases and the fragments produced are then separated by agarose gel electrophoresis on the basis of fragment length after staining the gel the separated bands are visualized 
thereafter the denatured dna fragments are blotted on a nylon membrane using capillary action or electrophoretically further during hybridization a probe a fragment of nucleic acid carrying specific sequence of gene of interest then binds to the blotted dna fragments carrying identical sequences this hybridization between the sample dna and probe can be further detected by using a radio labeled or labeled probe southern blot hybridization technique plays a vital role in diagnosis of diseases selecting gene genetic mapping and also dna fingerprinting thank you